Hey everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-D-E-L-U-I-S-E. -E. And thank you for seeing me today. Thank you. Please take the time to like and subscribe to my video to let me know I'm doing a good job. Um, I have no technical experience like the rest of the people, so I can't use all these technical effects to get you to hang around. So um, please take the time to like and subscribe. I'm just a person reading books. That's all I am. I'm reading books and I'm talking about books. That's what I do. So if you could please help me by liking and subscribing, it would be most appreciative. And today we are talking about Carol Haynes' Booty Bones. And I am a series person and I like to read series. And I like to come into a pre-existing series with at least 10 or more books in it so that I can binge read. And that was my huge, 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 huge mistake with this. I started in the middle. And that left me with a handicap, a huge handicap. And this book has made me firmly believe I'm going to go back and start with book one. So you will be seeing book reviews of previous books before. I may do one more future book, but then I'm going to go back. I'm definitely absolutely going back and starting with Them Bones, the first book series, first in the series. It's probably going to be Kindle because they're really hard to get a hold of. And that was another one of my big videos in the past is that um, when you finally, you go to all this shovel to find a series. And then you can't find book one. So what the F is up with that? They only carry the most current books. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do Kindle. So, you know, shudder the horror. But I won't have a physical book and it'll bother me a lot because I like a physical book. I'm a physical book person. Unless you're going on a cruise or a trip, it's hard to take 50 books with you on a thing. I average, I read average about two books a day. Um, so like I said, this, this really bothered me tremendously with this particular book. Well, and, and the book prior to it too, but in this book, more than anything, it became really apparent that I needed to have read the previous books. And, you know, I hate it when TV writers feel the need to torture the viewers like Star Trek Next Generation, Riker and Troy. They just, they were like, when the series first started, you knew that they had been lovers before the series started. And then the writers spent the whole rest of the series throwing them at other people. And the Jonathan Frakes mentioned previously that him and um, Miranda tried to make sly little comments or gestures or something to show that they were still thinking of each other, even though they were, had other people. They even threw Deanna or Worf later on in the series. We'll get to that. But um, Remington Steele, Moonlighting, Who's the Boss? Lewis and Clark, that frog story was the worst, wasn't it? But I like to read the books from the beginning. I like to watch the character growth and development. And um, I'm really sorry that I didn't do that with these. And I'm going to do that with these now. Because obviously I am missing a tremendous lot by not having read the previous books. So, um, Catherine Coulter got her couple together, Sherlock and Savick, because they were both in the same field. And, uh, Mercy Thompson works with Adam in the Patricia Briggs series. And Sarah Brandt, even though she was a midwife to start, worked with Frank Malloy, the cop, 
to solve mysteries, to solve murders, to solve stuff that happened. So this, I didn't see it, and I'm really upset that I didn't see it in the beginning, that um, she was a detective and he was a movie actor. I just didn't see it, and I'm, I'm really upset. And I probably would have seen it if I'd read the earlier books, and I didn't. So I'm sorry about that. I am going to go back and read the series. Especially with the previous book. She does makes all these decisions in the previous book. And it ends up hurting Graf severely. And... Because of those decisions that she made in that book, um, she has to deal with the consequences in this book. And before I get started, and I'll probably say this again, who takes a cat to the beach? Excuse me, do you take your cat to the beach? Really? Do you take your cat to the beach? The dog, yes. You take the dog to the beach, you play frisbee, but a cat to the beach in a hurricane to a marina on a boat in a hurricane. I'm just saying. Do they have collars? Are they tagged? I think they are. But she was so I think Coleman would have been a better choice for Sarah but having not read the beginning of the series I don't know so that's another reason why I'm going to go back and to the beginning of the series and read it because it's mentioned casually in these last few books I've read that she had had been with Coleman at one point now he was a cop now that kind of works she's a detective he's a cop they look like they go together like that right so I just, I'm so frustrated over her actions that, I mean, in the first book I read, she, she, she almost killed herself and a partner because she failed to call for help. You know, Kinsey, Sue Grafton's Kinsey, she got in a lot of trouble because she didn't have a cell phone. She had to go to the pay, pay, pay phone, to the phone booth. I know this is a plot device. I know it's to further the plot. But it was so frustrating. She goes on this vacation, quote unquote, honeymoon type thing. I mean, they're not married yet, but they go off to this beach, oceanfront, and they take a cat and a dog. And then Sarah immediately gets embroiled in this mystery. This woman hires her to solve this mystery. And she, her and Graf avoid each other the whole time. You know, red flag, red flag, Jitty in Widow Weeds, the whole book, red flag. And you know, it would be nice if Jitty in some way provided hints every once in a while. I know in oh, my library series with Smokey Gray, at least the ghost there provides little hints here and there. But Jitty doesn't provide any hints, or at least they're so obtuse that I don't see them. So I need to know the backstory of these characters, like I said. And see, her and Graf avoid each other the whole time. They avoid, she's making all these plans. She's contacting the minister. 
and she's getting the license and the whole nine yards, and he's sleeping on the couch. Do you marry a man who's sleeping on the couch? Unless you're, you know, in a platonic relationship, I guess, and you're... Don't you have to have chaperones if you're in a platonic relationship? I don't know. I don't know what was going on in this girl's head. But she got so wrapped up in the mystery, and um, she made a lot of waves, and people started coming after her, and Angela, and Trina when she gets there, Trinky. But I just, she was avoiding it. We were avoiding the whole story. And so she's solving this mystery of the castle of the fort, should we say, and the murder of this guy that's been wrongfully in, in prison. And I've seen this a couple times in other authors' books, too, that um, they, they, someone's been wrongfully committed by a, a crooked person, a crooked lawyer or a crooked judge or somebody like that. But, um, and she gets really involved in this, and it's, I'm like, there's a hurricane coming, and she's in the Gulf of Mexico. Get out! But they end up being okay. But it reminds me a lot, Sarah Booth does a lot of Kara Cedric's character. Um, Brenda Lee Johnson in The Closer. Because whenever Frisk wanted to bring up a top pick, she used work to avoid it. So, and that lady's marrying whatever. Um, it turns out she knew that Sarah and Graf were going to be there in advance. So she planned the whole thing other woman and it turns out Graf had a previous other woman and um they get into several hard difficult situations um so much stuff goes on at the end I mean it's like a slow pace it's got a good it draws you in you want to know what happened you like the mystery of it. You like the historical part of it. The mystery's good. The his I love books that focus on history. Her previous books have done genealogy and history. And there's also a surprise genealogy in here, too, at the end. You re have a surprise revelation. And um, there's, well, there's several surprise revelations. Um, Graf has a reason why he keeps asking Sarah Booth for time. He needs more time. He needs more time. He's healed almost, you know, 75, 90%. And he needs more time. Well, there's a reason he needs more time. And Sarah spots the other woman on the beach. And then the elephant in the room gets avoided for a while to pursue. I know it's to pursue pot line. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold hold your grapes but um so i really have to go back and read the beginning of this because it's just driving me crazy um you know it sounds like i don't know because i haven't read the book yet but it sounds like coleman would have been a better fit because he was a cop they could have worked together their their stuff could have meshed better graph is a is an actor and he works out in california in hollywood or new york or wherever they go and sarah was plenty firmly rooted in New Orleans or Mississippi and she wasn't leaving for nothing like she had all these opportunities to go out and visit him and out and she kept avoiding it for her work so you know it just didn't jive in and he was away a lot and then when he was home it just it just didn't work and I didn't see it I was too involved in the mysteries and the series and you know when I read my JD Rob I read for characters I don't care what the mystery... Well, I do care. If it's interesting, blah, blah, blah. But I'm there for the characters. I'm there for Nadine and Mavis and Eve and Rock and McNabb and Peabody. Um, 
but uh, so I need to go back and, and get refreshed on these characters because um, it's sad. Um, Graf breaks her heart, breaks Sarah's heart at the end of this. And um, I mean, even if, even if that stuff didn't happen in the last book, I still see this coming because he, he just, he wasn't there there for her. You know what I mean? He wasn't there. Like, I know several guys that if anything happens, they're there there for their spouses or girlfriends. And then I know these other guys that are like, well, she's got the situation covered. Why do I need to go? She had a fender bender, and I gave I gave her the insurance information. Doesn't she have it on her? Doesn't she have the car? Isn't it her car? I was so confused over that story. But um, he's like, well, she's got it covered, and by the time I get across town, it'll be over. I just, it sounds like Raph to me. It really does. It's like, ah... Uh, when something happens to your significant other, you go. And if nothing else, you give emotional support to that person. Hug, kiss, hug, whatever. You don't have to buy them anything. But um, hug, kiss, support, pat on the back, you're there for them. Graf didn't do this much. He wasn't there a lot. And she was forever putting herself in danger. I mean, the... Not, not the book before this, but the book before that. When those crooked people, and she, they almost drowned her in the secret room in the house and the fake deaths. And that's just, it was just. But, um, so th it's interesting. It's got a good multi-layered. It turns out it's not just one bad guy. It's a group of bad guys. And it's cool how they figure out the mystery and how she solves where the treasure is and all that kind of stuff um but uh i can still do a couple more parades um but definitely check out the book um you need to find out what happens with graf and sarah and how they solve the mystery of the i gotta do one more um of the treasure and uh but really, I have got to go back and read them bones again because uh, I, I really do feel like I am missing a tremendous amount of the story by not knowing the, uh, the back characters of the story. I need to know what her relationship was with Coleman and why it didn't continue did she dump um graph i mean uh coleman for graph was that the situation there i don't know but um once again please take the time to like and subscribe uh my channel it's much appreciative let me know i'm doing okay please do those likes um it's important I have no fancy tricks or anything. It's just me reading books, talking about books. And um, so I hope you just like and subscribe to my, my channel. I really appreciate it. I think I can get about three more in here. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.